everyone. You guys, this week we're going to be working on a look that I've done quite a bit. It's a classic brandy blend. Um, I'm going to be taking a five color blend in teals and whites and blues, which speaks to my heart because I love the blues and the greens. It's where my eye goes. So these are looks that I love to do. Um, and this is what our piece is starting out as, and this is the direction that it's going. So you can already see the transformation that we get to make happen this week. Um, these are customers pieces. She's um, owned them for a while and we get to take this and update it and make it something that she can keep in her life and use. Um, it's going into a, a house that's full of color and eye candy everywhere you look. Um, but, but this is probably one of the first looks that I did on camera and um, it was wildly popular. I did a tutorial for it a couple years ago. Um, we're also going to be adding some gold leaf to make this a little bit bling. Um, but I think this is a really fun look and this is this is my style in a nutshell. So I hope you guys enjoy um, Enjoy the video and we will get these pieces started I start all of my pieces by first removing the hardware and then I'm going to go ahead and give this a good cleaning with Dixie Belle white lightning Here I'm spraying it down with my white lightning and then look what happens I'm slowing this down so you can see the piece is literally bleeding right before my eyes If you see your piece doing this literally bleeding brown, that means you're gonna need a coat of boss. This piece actually deceived me because I thought it had an oil-based finish on it and slick stick would be the answer, but it actually ended up needing boss on it. I numbered all my drawers so I know what order they go back in and now I'm going to give it a scuff sand. The scuff sand is just going to take down the gloss of the oil-based finish that's on this piece. Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer, not a gripping primer, so the scuff sand helps my boss to bond to my piece. I chose Boss in White. I'm applying it with my Dixie Belle Mini. It just goes right on over my existing finish and it goes on like a paint. This is the base for my entire finish, so I want to make sure that my boss goes on as streak-free as I can. I make sure I run my brush strokes all the way across the length of my piece. Now I'm going to start my blended finish. This is going to be using five colors. My first color that I'm putting on the bottom is Dixie Belle Midnight Sky, and that's going to fade up into Antebellum Blue, Mermaid Tail, The Gulf, and ultimately into Fluff, which is a white. I do not expect to get full coverage over this white primer. I know that it's going to take two coats to ultimately cover it, and so my first coat is just really conceptualizing my color layout on my piece. At this point, I'm just focusing on where I want my colors to meet up, the order I want them to go in, how they look together, do I want to change any of my colors. This is my decision-making process right here. I'm not worried about perfecting my blends at this point. I just want to get my colors on. My second coat is where I'm going to worry about making all of those perfections. I do make sure to pull out my drawers after I've got my basic blend over the front of them and make sure the inside of the frame matches as well. I get asked a lot why I paint with my drawers in on camera and there's really two reasons for that. Number one is if I'm doing a blend over the front of my piece, I need to make sure that my blend goes seamlessly over the front of the drawers. And number two is that they hold the, the frame holds the drawers in for a good camera angle for me as well. So those are really the two reasons you don't see me take my drawers out. If I'm doing a solid color, you'll notice that I do take them out because I don't need to blend over the front of them. Now I'm going to move up into my lighter colors. I genuinely hate blending into a white. Anytime I can, I usually will choose an off-white, a cream color, or even a soft blue or green versus blending into a pure white. It is a challenge for sure. With my base coat all on and my color layout decided, I came back on day three to finalize my blending. I'm going to start out before my second coat by giving a light sanding to my first coat. This just brings down any dust spots or any roughness that might be in my first coat of paint. I make sure and tack off all my dust and then I get out about a million brushes. When I'm blending, I like to reverse my order from my first coat to my second coat. So my first coat I started down low with my darker color. This coat I'm going to start up high with my white. The reason I reverse my order is because I find that whatever color you start with, you tend to get a little bit heavy handed with. So you'll notice because I started with darker colors on my first coat, I'm a little heavy on my dark colors. Um, so by starting my second coat with the lighter colors, I hope to even them out in my finished product. I find that blending is a lot of back and forth. So a few of my basic rules is I use a good quality synthetic bristle brush. The ones that I like to use are the Dixie Belle Mini for laying my paint on and the Oval Medium for blending it out. I use a um, continuous spray mister for laying a little bit of water. You do need a little bit of water to elongate the life of the paint. 
Not all paints are equally blendable, so consider that when you're trying to blend with your paint, what brand you're using. Dixie Belle is a highly blendable paint. That little bit of water extends the life so I can really play with it. I actually use very little paint when I'm blending. I have most of my coverage for my first coat, so the second coat I just need light coverage. I don't need a lot of paint. I'm just using it to perfect the blending. So a little bit of paint along with a little bit of water is really all I'm working with. If you use too much paint, you're gonna find that you create a soupy mess and really make yourself frustrated. Another tool I like to use when I'm blending is I actually will turn the camera on myself and I use it like a mirror. So sometimes you can see things differently from a different angle. So I'll glance back at my camera just to see what it looks like. And sometimes I can see things that I don't necessarily see when I'm sitting straight on with the piece. One of the toughest things I find to teach when you're blending is that it actually takes a very light hand. So if you're a heavy handed painter, you're gonna teach yourself that on this second coat, you actually need to use a very soft hand to work these colors together. I'm not blending or bending my brush at all. I'm just using the tips of my bristles to work the colors. If you find your paint starts to stick, you need to add a little bit of water. I just work one transition at a time, so I'm not trying to work all my colors at the same time. I worked my white into the gulf, and then my gulf into mermaid tail, and now I'm doing mermaid tail into antebellum blue. Just paying attention to where two colors meet up at a time takes the process down and simplifies it a little bit. You get a little stressed out if you try to focus on all five colors at once. So my first coat was just laying the paint on and getting a basic layout. That went fairly quickly. I got that done in probably probably about an hour. The second coat actually took me about double that. I spent about two hours on the entire body of this piece perfecting my blended coat overall. So I really take time on my second coat as well. I left all of this in here so you can really see how long it would take to go through the front. I still have to do the sides and the top on this one as well. All right, I'm pretty happy with these blends, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it be. I do find that if you try to overwork it, you can make more mistakes than you had in the first place. My next step is going to be to add a little bit of adhesive and we're gonna stick some gold leaf on this. I like to use um, adhesive sizing, which is made for applying metallic leaf, and then I'm just using gold leaf that I picked up off Amazon. You can also use your Dixie Belle clear coats as an adhesive for gold leafing, but I like the sizing because it gets tacky quicker, so it makes the work go a little bit faster. Not all gold leafing is made the same. There are some brands that I like better than others, but for messy looks like this, irregular looks, I find that the inexpensive gold leaf from Amazon works just fine. The adhesive size will start to stick to your fingers, so I'm using the sheets that come with the gold leaf to apply them so it doesn't get sticky to my fingers. I applied my sizing in a really irregular fashion and then stuck the sheets of leafing on top of it. Now I'm coming back with a blush brush just from the drugstore and I'm lightly brushing off the excess gold leaf. It's just gonna stick where it had the adhesive underneath and all the excess is going to flake away. I will warn you, gold leafing is the glitter of the craft world. It makes a huge mess and this gold leafing is going to be found in my workspace for weeks to come. Gold leaf brushes are expensive, and so these really soft blush brushes are perfect for dusting the pieces off like this. But you can see how it just creates little air of glitter all over the place. Once I do my first dusting, I can go back and look and see if there's any spots that I want to fill in with excess gold leaf, and then I just fill those in to make the pattern that I want. I didn't want this to look like a stripe up my piece. I wanted it to look nice and irregular, so I came back and added a few extra spots all the way up the front. Let's talk about sealing gold leaf. I find that if you try to go over it with your regular clear coat, a lot of the gold leaf will not accept the clear coat. It tends to bead up over the top. Maybe it has an oil on it. So I do use a metallic leaf sealant before I put my clear coat on. And this just makes sure that my leaf is sealed. It does not discolor underneath. And then I can go ahead and go over the entire piece with my clear coat. The metal leaf sealer I'm using here is by Mona Lisa. A couple of my pieces of hardware landed dead center of my gold leafing pattern, and so I want to make sure that they match the exact gold on the body of the piece. I'm going to add gold leafing to my hardware as well. This is a beautiful look. For the other pieces of hardware, I just used a gold metallic spray paint on them. When I'm gold leafing hardware, I go ahead and use my Super 77 by 3M, which is a spray adhesive. Um, add that to my hardware, and then I can add a sheet of gold leaf over top and brush away the excess just like I did on the body. With the gold leaf on, I go ahead and seal it in a clear spray lacquer. So remember what I said about it being the glitter of the craft world? Now I get to clean up this huge mess of gold leaf and it was everywhere. 
Now that my gold leaf is all on and I've sealed it with my metallic leaf sealer, I'm going to go over the entire body with my satin clear coat from Dixie Bell. I'm just applying it with their damp applicator sponge. Now the sheen over the entire body is going to match perfectly. I'm going to continue on and add my same satin clear coat over the fronts of my drawers. When I'm wiping or brushing clear coat, I like to use satin clear. I find it's the easiest for wiping or brushing and I love to spray gator hide. When I'm wiping it on, I make sure to wipe all the way across the front of my piece using long linear strokes so that I don't create streakiness in my finish. When I was done sealing this, I found the front of the piece was gorgeous, but the drawer sides were hideous. They were still that old, ugly yellow color. So I sanded them all down to bare wood using my surf prep sander, and then I came back with some of my Dixie Belle silk screen stencils. The silk screen stencils are completely reusable. They have a screen made of silk embedded in the stencil itself, and so you can get these ultra fine details with them. I'm just using my regular Dixie Belle paint and I'm making the sides of my drawers match the color that they coordinate with on the body so they're gradated just like the front. And then I'm applying my paint using a silicone spatula tool. I have these in my Amazon shop. I like to use a little bit of the thickened paint from the lid of my paint container. Um, the thicker paint just goes on perfectly almost like a paste. These stencils are completely reusable, so my dresser had four drawers and my nightstand had two, so I had ten drawer sides that I needed to do. I got all ten drawer sides out of one stencil. Um, I washed it out one time in between, and then I'm able to still wash it out and use it more afterwards. I try to work fairly quickly. I don't want the paint to dry in the mesh of my stencil. That can make them really tough to clean afterwards. I do recommend having a dish of water close by after you use these to get them into water as soon as they're done. I feel like this drawer side detail made the sides of the piece as just as interesting as the front was. This was just the detail that it needed. Any little spots of excess I got around my stencil, I just sanded off after the fact. Okay, I really hate this video, but I wanted to leave it in to show you guys how to clean these silk screen stencils. I swear I went back and cleaned my sink afterwards. This is my garage sink where I clean paint brushes 10 times a day, so it was filthy. Um, okay, so what I'm doing to clean my silk screen, I'm just using the scrubby soap available from Dixie Belle. I had a little paint that had kind of started to set up on the stencil. So while it was still fresh, I just come back with my scrubby soap and I can scrub it right out of the mesh of the silk screen. These are recommended for 8 to 10 uses, but I got 10 uses out of this one and it's still got plenty left. So as long as you take care of them, these are highly reusable. I just cleaned it off and then stuck it to my backsplash to dry. I did go ahead and seal those drawer sides as well and now my piece is done and they are stunning. I'm super excited for this set. I love a good blended look but that gold leaf really made these pieces and the drawer sides, oh that's probably my favorite part. If you guys enjoyed this video I hope you'll click subscribe. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube.